Hello, my lovely Rose Garden. What's this? A script? On the Roslyn Books channel in the year of Our Dark Mother 2022? Why, yes. While I have been liberated from the scripted scourge on most of my videos in order to present my authentic opinions and indulge my laziness to avoid editing, there are some areas that do still require at least a little structure in order to make a cohesive point. Creative Writing Basics is some areas. In the last episode of Creative Writing Basics, I talked about character arcs and the differences between static, dynamic, flat, and round characters. This video is the follow-up slash second part to that lesson, so I strongly recommend checking it out if you haven't already. There will be a handy link... somewhere. Character archetypes are most succinctly defined as a preset of identifiable traits that neatly slot characters into categories with other similar characters, because the human brain loves categorizing things into neat boxes. Do not be alarmed if your characters fit into notable character archetypes. There are literally hundreds of them depending on how specific you want to get with categorizing different character traits and there are enough generalized archetypes that most, if not all, characters will fit into at least one box. Now, I'm not going to go into those hundreds of archetypes. TV Tropes has plenty of them if you want more examples than the 12 I'm willing to provide. Why 12? Because Writing 101 Masterclass has 12, and I'm going to link the article. Consistency is key. Also, I can come up with 12 examples from Clouded Moon. A major facet of these archetypes is the fact that they show up in literary works regardless of time and place. Similar to The Hero's Journey, previously discussed, you can compare the stories of two cultures from vastly different times and places in human history and still find these archetypes present in that culture's works. The hero, as discussed before, is the character that saves the day. They are most typically defined by their courage and perseverance in the face of challenges they meet along their journey. Flaws for heroes are many, but the most common is overconfidence in their ability after they've won a few fights. Examples include almost any main character from any prominent work in pop culture that you can name. In Clouded Moon, Dawn Frost most easily fits this category. The lover is the romantic, in the sense that they are passionate and driven by humanistic ideals and convictions. They believe the best in people and can be led astray due to their naive and trusting nature. They make decisions based primarily on emotion and ideals. When someone says they're a lover, not a fighter, they mean they fall into this archetype. It actually has nothing to do with hearts and flowers though it can, such as infamous examples Romeo and Juliet. Or if you're reading Clouded Moon, we'd have Spotted Shadow in this role. The Magician is your standard magic user, or if we're talking about a world where magic doesn't exist, someone who has gained some kind of hidden knowledge that grants them some kind of power in the story. They can be a guide or a powerful figure to seek as an ally. They could also be corrupted by their power. Either way, they've got power that the hero does not, or at least does not have yet. See Odin, Darth Vader, Erevos, and Clow Reed for some examples. Our magician in Clouded Moon goes to Thornheart due to his connection with the spirits. The outlaw or the rogue operates by their own rules in flagrant disregard of convention and law. Oftentimes they do have their own code of ethics or rules that dictate their actions. These simply don't align with the laws of the established ruling class. Their role in the story is likely dependent on whatever the hero's relationship with that established ruling class is. Han Solo is a heroic example because the hero Luke opposes the Empire, whereas in a work like Pokemon, where the hero is a child who, rather by default, is on the side of the established order, the outlaws are the bad guys. Not to reveal too much, but Fernface is a... Uh, yeah, she's this one. But in a sense, so is Wild Fur. Make of that what you will. The explorer is driven by curiosity and desire to seek out the unknown. 
They are self-starters driven by their own desires and need to know more about something that rarely lets them rest. Think of those characters that aren't happy unless they're unraveling a mystery, like Sherlock Holmes, or those who seek to leave home, like Huckleberry Finn. In Clouded Moon, Wolfthorn seeks beyond the borders of the Alliance Lake territory for the chance at a new life. The Sage or Mentor is similar to the Magician in that they have some kind of power sought out by the hero, but unlike the Magician, their role in the story is to teach that power to the hero. This is where we'd put Obi-Wan Kenobi and Yoda, or pretty much any teacher character. In Clouded Moon, this position goes to Misty Snow for her role in guiding Spotted Shadow. The Innocent is a morally pure character, oftentimes one that is unfamiliar with the world or lacks worldly experience that has allowed them to keep their innocence intact. Airy, Tiny Tim, Suan, Basically, any cute character who needs to be protected falls into this category. You know Peach fits this perfectly as Clouded Moon's most innocent innocent. The creator is a visionary who desires to, well, create, according to that vision. What it is that they want to create may not seem possible, and they will often be doubted and tested in their attempt to create it. In some stories, they overcome the odds and succeed, as Doc Brown does with his time machine. Others regret their creations, like Victor Frankenstein. Still others lose their humanity in the pursuit of their goal, like Shao Tucker. Which of these will Golden Pelt be? No spoilers. The ruler is literally the person in charge. They have authority and power. Sometimes that's a good thing, and they rule justly, such as King Arthur or Aslan. Other times, they're a dictator that needs to be overthrown, like Palpatine or President Snow. Regardless, if there is a crown, they are the one wearing it. This is every captain in Clouded Moon. The caregiver is generally a gentle and kind soul whose purpose is to provide emotional support and comfort even at their own detriment. They usually don't have many personal ambitions, and if they do, they're likely to give them up in service to others. Pretty much any anime mom with a side ponytail fits this, and so does Midoriya Inko in A Rare Living Example, along with Joyce Byers and Bambi's mom. The caregiver doesn't necessarily have to be female, but due to cultural expectations of womanhood, they usually are. Keepers fit this archetype in Clouded Moon. The everyman is your average Joe or Joan, just a regular everyday person that most people can relate to because most people are the everyman. They don't have special powers or access to secret knowledge or anything like that. They're just a regular person like you who got plucked off the street and thrown into this story. This trope is extremely common, especially in the isekai genre, where a regular person from normal world gets thrown into some kind of epic magical adventure for seemingly no reason other than they were in the right place at the right time. Other notable examples include Bilbo Baggins, Eleanor Shellstrop, and the vast majority of most sitcom casts. This is Poole's role in Clouded Moon. The Jester, or Trickster, is a character that often is unpredictable in their actions and can often surprise the hero with unexpected truths. Their presence brings levity to the story and provides the audience a laugh, while they at the same time reveal themes through satirical means. Sun Wukong may be one of the most famous examples of this archetype in history and is joined by the likes of Bugs Bunny, Loki, and Ella Herrera. Moss finds herself among legends, it seems. Moving on to our next topic, archetypes and foils are not necessarily related or connected concepts in literature, at least not any more than any other literary device or technique. But I do want to segue from archetypes to foils with one final archetype, the shadow. The shadow is the opposite of the hero. They most often share some kind of origin with the hero and represent what the hero could be had they made different choices or experienced different circumstances. Consider Darth Vader versus Luke, connected by their familial bond but as different as night and day until Luke is able to bring Vader back to the light. 
And though it loathes me to say it, it is a well-known and easy-to-explain example, Harry Potter and Voldemort. Two abused and unloved kids of unprecedented magical potential who went to a magic school and studied under Dumbledore, connected by a single choice and locked in conflict until one ultimately emerges victorious. Foils function very similarly to the shadow archetype. While the shadow is specifically the equal and opposite of the hero, foils are character pairs that are equal and opposite to each other. They don't have to be the hero and shadow. Foils also offer a look into thematic elements of a story and provide further examination of characters' motivations and goals, thus fleshing out their arcs through interaction. I'm a big character reader and writer, so this is a key feature in many of my works, Clouded Moon especially. If you are familiar with Clouded Moon at all, you probably already thought of a pair of characters that are foils to each other. There are several throughout the book. Let's look at a few examples and how they are both connected and differ from each other. Golden Pelt and Spotted Shadow were raised together in Field Colony and were once very close friends, even planning to one day rule the colony together. After Spotted Shadow experienced a personal tragedy, they began to drift apart, as Spotted Shadow found friendship and comfort in Cat's outside field colony that Golden Pelt could not accept. Golden Pelt sought to get his friend back on the path they'd previously established for themselves by any means necessary, and by doing so drove her away. Now Golden Pelt and Spotted Shadow are both charismatic young rangers, but they have fundamentally different views of the way colonies should be run and the relationship Field Colony should have with the rest of the Alliance. Golden Pelt follows his mentor's example of exclusionist policy and placing Field Colony first, and last and only. He is well-liked in Field Colony and has many friends, but none in the wider Alliance. Spotted Shadow is more empathic, viewing Field Colony as one part of a greater community, and has strong ties with cats in other colonies while having only a few friends within Field Colony, and even they don't fully agree with her ideas. Their places as opposites on an ideological spectrum fuels the conflict between their characters and drives the plot forward. It also reveals the thematic element of self-preserving apathy versus altruistic empathy. Dawn Frost and Wolfthorn are another foil pair. They fell in love in their youth and once dreamed of a life together. However, when Wolfthorn left his colony behind to seek out a place beyond Alliance borders where they could realize that dream, Dawn Frost dug her oak colony roots in deeper as a hopeful contender for second in command and then captain. While Wolfthorn is willing to change his entire life and abandon a colony he no longer trusts for love, Dawn Frost will sacrifice her relationship with the love of her life to prove her loyalty to Oak Colony and achieve the future of power and respect she's worked so hard for. These characters are not enemies, but they are opposites in what drives them and what they want, which creates conflict between them that is perfect for adding drama and personal turmoil to the story. This brings up themes of personal freedom versus duty and pathos, or emotion, versus ethos, or ethics what one wants to do versus what one needs to do. With a large cast like Clouded Moons, it is not difficult to find examples of character foils. However, you don't need a large cast to have foils. Two is the minimum. Explore your cast of characters and see where you can find equal and opposite pairs. As demonstrated above, these pairs can oftentimes be used to explore deeper narrative themes, so, if slash when you identify a foil pair, ask yourself what ideas their differences and values express to the reader. I think that's going to be all for this lesson. Again, please keep in mind that these videos are creative writing basics. There are tons more archetypes out there to explore and many ways to craft character foils. And as always, do remember that these videos are meant to provide you with tools and tips for crafting your story not make any attempt to claim that there is one right way to do so. Use the advice that is meaningful to you and will help you and your story flourish. With all that said, if you like this video or find it helpful, 
please give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more like it. If you want to support the work I do, there are links in the description to my website where you can sign up for my newsletter, my Patreon, Etsy shop, and coffee. You can also find me on social media at the links below. Thank you very much for watching and keep writing till next time, Rose Garden!